A Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian, insists Liberal Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, cabinet ministers, and MPs. Terrorist Mr. Harper, against this country. a Canadian an individual is a Canadian question, is a Canadian. And you, devalue, you devalue the citizenship of every Canadian uh, in this place and in this country when you break down and make it conditional for anyone. And we believe very strongly that there should be only one class of Canadians, that all Canadians are equal, that a Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian, from coast to coast to coast. But those liberal proclamations are for convicted criminals and terrorists. For patriotic, law-abiding Canadian citizens born in the United States, a liberal hypocrite is a hypocrite is a hypocrite. In opposition, liberals highly criticize conservatives for agreeing to American Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, or FATCA. Conservatives passed a law mandating Canadian banks and financial institutions to seek out Canadians born in the United States for reporting their private banking and financial information to Canada Revenue Agency to hand over to a foreign government, the American Internal Revenue Service. Conservatives did the unthinkable. They passed a law overriding all Canadian laws for a foreign government. Liberals were critical, but liberals flip-flopped. Liberals like Mark Garneau called the FATCA Act doing the dirty work of the IRS, an attack on our privacy and Canada's sovereignty. While I and the Liberal Party of Canada have strong and profound disagreements with FATCA and its implementation, particularly as it infringes on privacy rights in the Charter and forces the Canada Revenue Agency to do the IRS's dirty work and infringes upon our sovereignty, I will save that for a debate for another day. Garneau accused Conservatives of violating the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. He said Conservatives folded their tent on Canadian citizens for FATCA. I thank my colleague from uh, Saanich Gulf Islands for raising the issue of, uh, uh, of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms because we also in the Liberal Party uh, are concerned based on what we've seen from uh, constitutional experts that there may be violations of the Charter of Rights. But let me get to uh, my question which is uh, dealing with FATCA. And as you know, under FATCA, Canadian banks must report to the IRS um, the uh, accounts held by clients uh, who happen to have U.S. citizenship, and as we say here in Canada, uh, there are about a million of them. Now, the, otherwise, they, they face the prospect of, uh, of a 30 percent withholding tax on their U.S. income. So uh, the government seems to have been very motivated to protect the banks from this, and they've come up with some alternate arrangements and some changes. and. As it turns out, the banks will report to the CRA, which will then report on to the IRS. But there doesn't seem to have been the same concern for the citizens themselves. In fact, it seems that the government has folded its tent here and seems quite happy to, uh, in fact, do the work of the IRS insofar as citizens are concerned. I'd like to hear more from, uh, from my honorable colleague on why she thinks that uh, the banks are being protected here, but not Canadian citizens with dual nationality. Flip-flop. Garneau now endorses this dirty work charter violation. As finance critic, Scott Bryson criticized FATCA. The government did not negotiate a good deal in Washington. In the same way that they lack capacity to get a pipeline built, uh, with uh, in, in the U.S. and because of their lack of relationships with the Obama administration, they also failed to defend Canadian interests in, in terms of FATCA. Uh, look, this IGA gets Canadian banks off the hook from reporting. It does not get Canadians, Canadian citizens, who happen to be considered American persons, off the hook. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion on, on FATCA and members of the business community are not the only ones who are being squeezed by Bill C-31. Canada-U.S. dual citizens are left out of the cold. 
uh, the minister and even some financial officials could not actually answer the question how many Canadians are affected. Uh, the reality is it's about a million Canadians who are caught in this dragnet. Flip flop. Now, President of Treasury Board Bryson endorses FATCA. He has shown no interest or intent to negotiate a better deal or to reintroduce an amendment he proposed in opposition to protect one million Canadians. Emmanuel Dubourg wrote and spoke strongly against FATCA as revenue critic. He called FATCA dangerous, an attack on our privacy. Dubourg said liberals were truly appalled by CRA doing the dirty work of the IRS. We know, Mr. Speaker, that FATCA is an English acronym, but it's an American law, and this was this is an issue that affects Canadians with dual citizenship, so about a million Canadians. From now on, Canadian banks will have to give information on those individuals to Canada Revenue Agency, or CRA, and CRA will do the dirty work. They will transfer the money to the IRS. Flip-flop. The Liberal Minister of National Revenue stood in the House of Commons and defended FATCA. Uh, here's another liberal pro broken promise. Uh, the Conservatives signed a deal to implement FATCA and hand over private financial information of a million Canadians to the United States. During the campaign, the Liberals said the deal violates privacy rights and may even be unconstitutional. But now in government, they've handed over private information on more than 155,000 Canadians so far, Whoa. without even understanding the impact. So how can this government be so careless with its promises and so careless with the privacy rights of up to one million Canadians? The Honourable Minister, our government takes the issue of privacy very seriously. We will continue to work in conjunction with the U.S. to ensure that all safety guarantees are complied with. We want to point out that both countries have a long tradition of cooperation on these matters, and uh, it dates back to 1942. I want to reassure Canadians that all exchanges of information with the U.S. with respect to privacy are in vigor and are Enforce and consistent. In a national newspaper, Dubourg called FATCA dangerous. He asserted, We must deny the Conservatives permission to allow the transmission of personal information under the pretense of combating tax evasion. Now, Parliamentary Secretary of National Revenue, Dubourg sat silently while the Liberal Minister of National Revenue defended FATCA under the pretense of combating tax evasion. Mr. Chair, this is one of our priorities as a government. These information sharing agreements are very important because they allow us to better combat tax evasion and tax avoidance. Canadians are telling us that they want us to crack down on tax evasion and tax avoidance, and the government has committed to do so, as I mentioned earlier this week. The minister this falsely asserted to a parliamentary committee that Liberals only objected to the process Conservatives used for implementing this foreign law in Canada. I believe these are important questions that we're asking on, on behalf of of, uh, of Canadians on, on behalf of, of, of our, our constituents. So just want to want to make sure that we're, we're putting on the record that previously the, the uh, a, a number of members of your caucus, there's, there's a few others here, which I, I won't go into now, uh, and, and the, the Prime Minister were not, not earlier, were not supportive of, of this legislation. Now you're, what you're, you're indicating is that because you've had more time to review it, that you are you are now you, the Prime Minister, and members of your caucus are now supportive of, of this legislation. Is that a correct synopsis of your your statements? Exactly. And I would say once again that the 
problem that we had was in terms of the way the process that had been chosen. Had at the time all parliamentarians been involved, we would probably not even be here today discussing this. So our difficulty was at the, the process uh, level. Despite these and numerous other strong liberal objections to FATCA, Liberal Finance Minister Bill Morneau sent letters justifying FATCA and calling patriotic Canadian citizens U.S. persons, U.S. citizens, and Canadian residents. Chief Liberal FATCA flip-flopping hypocrite is Prime Minister Trudeau. In a letter before the election, Trudeau said, The Government of Canada has an obligation to stand up for its citizens when foreign governments are encroaching on their rights. We believe that the deal reached between Canada and the U.S. is insufficient to protect affected Canadians. FATCA encroaches, yet the Prime Minister refuses to protect affected Canadians. Liberal hypocrisy must be stopped. Liberals must stop the dirty work. Liberals must stop this dangerous attack on our privacy and on Canada's sovereignty. Liberals must stop this charter violation. Liberals must stop their FATCA flip-flopping hypocrisy. There must be no second-class Canadian citizens, because a Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian.